Alright, today we're going to talk about seven things prospective and new owners need to know about Lamborghini Gallardos. A person should know who's getting into one of these cars is the nose lift. If for some reason you are looking at a 2004 model year, what you're going to find is those cars do not come equipped with the nose lift. In 2005 and newer, it does. This particular car has the nose lift feature as seen right down here on the dash with this button. You hit this button, it allows the nose to come up. You're able to clear high driveways, accesses to say gas stations and whatnot. Very interesting feature, great to have. Prevents uh, damage from the front end of these expensive cars. And here I'll show you how that works. Okay, so another thing worth mentioning, again to prospective or current owners, current owners probably have already figured this part of it out, is the stereo system in these early Lamborghinis. Absolutely horrendous. Beautiful to look at, great part, fits in very well with the whole uh, persona of the car and you know, it looks great. But turn it up, you can't hear it. You crank it all the way to the maximum volume setting and all you do is, you're still talking, you, you, you can still hear the engine, you can still hear the squeak of the brakes, you don't even have to yell to the person next to you, and, and you know, maybe that's not a bad thing, but sometimes you just want to crank that music, you can't. These cars have a terrible stock stereo system, that's why, to be quite honest, I can see a lot of people upgrading the stereos in these things, putting something with a little more wattage, a little bit more uh, functionality, and something more you know up to date so again something to be aware of if it hasn't been updated if you like music and you like it loud keep that in mind you're probably gonna upgrade so another thing that owners or again prospective owners should know about these Gallardos now obviously the newer cars the Huracan is a much improved transmission or at least that's what the critics are saying it's much improved, it's faster, it's more user friendly. Some people would say the e-gear systems in these early Gallardos are horrible. You've heard them on the, on some of the you know critics there on you know the shows like Talk Gear and so many other shows that suggest the e-gear system on these cars was just absolutely atrocious. Uh, yeah, they're a little bit awkward taking off from a start, but be honest that's a bit of the character of these cars and when you're banging through the gears none of that really matters these cars shift just they hit hard and that's to be honest part of the whole the whole persona of this car is a strong like a bull and basically charges like a bull so the aggressive transmission maybe slow by today's standards but the way it hammers it's beautiful you really have to give one a try it, it, I think just about anybody who gives something like this a drive will can appreciate the way these things shift and how they drive. The e-gear, again, is part of the personality, not up to the modern day twin clutch stuff. These old single clutch systems, a little slow, a little cumbersome, but boy, they're they strong and they hammer and it's, it's quite an experience. The clutches, on the other hand, I think part of where these things got a bum rap was the clutches didn't last. That was the early series clutches in these cars that got bad reputation for quick wear. Some of the early cars had probably, you could get three, four, th 5,000 miles, boom, and you're replacing a clutch. Then you're faced with that you know, $8,000 bill. People were getting pretty pissed off about that whole situation. Can't really blame them, to be uh, quite honest. Fortunately, Lamborghini hasn't been sleeping behind the wheels, pardon the pun. Every generation, they've created numerous generations over and over and improved on that clutch. Over the, over the years, and now uh, the later models of the clutch that go into these things do last quite a bit longer. You're getting maybe 15, 20,000, maybe on a good one, if you're not too abusive on it. And to be quite frank, on a car that you're not likely driving every day, that's gonna last you a long, long time anyway, so. The other thing, of course, one thing you can do to prevent some of those early premature wears don't, don't abuse it. The hard launches, that's going to eat your clutch. Yeah, when you're on the fly, you can hammer through the gears. But it's that quick, 
you know, punching it right out of first, hammering on it. Also, a lot of uphill backwards uh, driving. Not that you necessarily have to do that, but if you're in a car park, that kind of dictates that. Something that will take a bit of a toll as well. So, keeping in mind, the e-gear and the clutches don't last all that long. But again, considering the amount of mileage you would put on a car like this, these days, it's reasonable. And another thing that a person should know who's looking at buying these cars or possibly owns one, the rear view mirrors found in these Lamborghinis have been known to leak. When I say leak, there's a toxic chemical that gives it the rear view uh, dimming feature that for some reason the way they were manufactured in excessive uh, warm areas, you know, maybe southern US or in the deserts, those it can accelerate the wear and the deterioration of that mirror to the point where that mirror will leak. It can split and leak the fluid down onto the dash. If that liquid pours onto the dash, that will destroy this whole area. But frankly, very expensive car to fix. I don't even want to imagine what it costs to replace this whole panel. I don't think um, you know many people want to experience that, but there have been. There have been many owners that unfortunately have had that happen. The mirrors burst. You want to put acid on here, and this whole assembly gets wasted and wiped out. So beware. What I would do is recommend replacing this mirror with a good old-fashioned reversible standard style mirror. Again, from Audi Volkswagen parts bins. It will work. They work great and you have that reassurance that you're not going to destroy your dash. So another thing you need to know about these cars, jobber parts. Now you're not going to go down to the local, local regular auto store, Canadian Tire or any of those others in the US. Yeah, pet boys have all these different jobber stores. You're not going to buy parts for a car like this in a store like that. What you can find, however, are cross-referenced a lot of parts from Audis a lot of parts, even I hate to say it, from Volkswagen are interchangeable. Coils, uh, ignition parts, I mean, there's a lot of electrical components that will fit for this car that comes from a cross-reference part from a Volkswagen or an Audi. That can also save you a lot. Let's take a look at one reason, one thing you should know. Lamborghini Carano, unlike the Murcielago, has a rear mounted transmission. What that means, other than weight distribution, is maintenance. With these cars, a clutch can be done a lot more cost effectively than you could in a Murcielago, where the whole engine has to come out. A clutch job can happen for about five to eight thousand dollars in a car like this with rear main. A Murcielago, at $80, you're probably up at around that $20,000, $25,000. Key point to note when you're looking at buying a Lamborghini. Okay, so one other thing that I've noticed with these cars that's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Right now, seats pushed back, you're able to get in and out no problem. Say hypothetically you have a big bag of something you want to put behind the seat. How do you do that? Well, like any other car, you pull the seat ahead and it actually has a handle here to tilt the seat forward. Now, as you'll notice, it goes and you can pretty much get that seat ahead and inject whatever it is you need into the back space. Now, however, I'm done. I have a short passenger comes along. They decide they want to move the seat ahead so they can sit closer to the dashboard. So we move the seat up. Now we get to a point where we want to do something similar. They're out, we want to put a bag in the back. We try this again, and now, oops, what happened here? We can't get that seat pushed forward. Now we're kind of hooped. So one other thing that's a little bit of a pain in the ass, not really the end of the world, uh, but it is something to take note. Learn a little idiosyncrasies about these cars and once you get past those details, everything else is a cakewalk. Thanks again. Please subscribe, join, like, take a look at all the other videos I have to offer and uh, keep coming back. There will be many more to follow. Thanks again.